Sorority House Party, also known as Rock and Roll Fantasy, and also known as Sex Pot 2, is a 1992 sex comedy directed by David Michael Latt and starring Attila, April Lerman, Kim Little, Mark Stolci, Alan Charoff, Michael Xavier, Avalon Anders, and Joe Mundy. The film opens with art class. And fucking? What a transition. It's a sorority house party with debauchery. That was the most gratuitous boob shot in the history of film. Is that a glory hole? Bree wants to party, but her friend Alex is busy working on her architecture project. This whole scholarship charade has gone on long enough. Why don't you just admit it, Alex? You're addicted to model glue. That's good shit. Bree eventually drags her out to join the fun. Shem? What the hell is Shem? Wasn't he one of the Three Stooges? Oh, I hated that guy! Fuck you! Alex goes downstairs to watch a little television. When megastar Jamie Z rocks the planet with his new album, Moby Dick. Is it a drum solo? Chet shows up and harasses Alex for a date. I can see conversation in the presence of this... This point. Say hi to your mother for me. Biff said it better. Oh, Chet, I'm sorry. Come back. I want to show you my taser gun. Fifty minutes. Shit, I really wish this movie was going that fast. Elsewhere, Jamie Z is pulling some rock star shit. Who hung those records, Helen Keller? Red gets a call from Jamie and he tells him to ditch those fools and go for a ride in Red's sweet Rolls Royce. I don't want a sloppy job. Well, don't worry about it, Mr. Ferret. The car, the brakes, it's taken care of. It's a simple brake job. Wait, they're gonna kill him? Now don't get me wrong, I like the kid, but uh, sometimes you have to put business before friendship. Besides, I think this piece of paper has been in my desk drawer long enough. I don't think that's how those things work. Alex and Bree go to a bar that no college girl would ever go to to encounter a double stereotype. Oh, beautiful ladies. Could I interest you in some curded hot spicy buffalo wings? Jamie drinks and drives, eventually crashing the car, mostly because of the faulty brakes, but the booze didn't help and goes tumbling into the bar. Oh, it's him again. Again? Yeah, he always comes here at the end of the tour. Did I forget to tell you that? So Brie casually knows the rock star, whom her best friend is a huge fan of, and hasn't said jack shit. What a bitch! Jamie passes out, so the girls decide to kidnap his ass. Huh? Well, that's creepy. Know it. Oh, you guys really fucked up. Bree and Alex smuggle Jamie in, but run into resident Miranda. bitch Miranda. Picking up local transients, let me guess. Bree's idea? She's going to wear his skin, isn't she? Uh, this is assault. Yep, that too. Jamie's neck will be so fucked when he wakes up. They wake the next morning with Jamie handcuffed to the bed. Uh... Bray! I'll be right over. Wait, she doesn't live there? Why don't you take him breakfast in bed? 
Guys like that. Okay. Guys like breakfast in general. Jamie wakes up and he is pissed, waking the entire sorority until they bullshit a story as a cover. I tried to talk to him, I tried to be nice, but he's a dick. You handcuffed him to the fucking bed! Bree goes in the room asking for an apology and eventually taking a taser to him. Reb plays it up like Jamie is dead. Breaks my heart, but, uh, well, at least his music will live forever. Yeah, in fact, we're releasing a new recording next week. The bathroom tapes. The merchandising is accurate. Back of the house, Alex goes to talk to Jamie with a constant stream of almost naked girls barging in. Alex, did I leave my bra on here? Or fully naked. Maybe I shouldn't have been driving. I don't know. Maybe you did the right thing. Is rude? That was an attitude change. Please look at the camera. I think this guy may be a bad actor. There's some girl talk while looking for the key and some obvious boom mic action. Jamie freaks some more as they get the handcuffs off. You are now free to leave. I always thought of. I almost told you. Huh? I used to go to this coffee shop. They had a singer there named James Andenhofer. Ever hear of him? No. Oh, it's a backstory. Are we going to have a musical interlude? Nope, they're going to get it on. I bet this guy can't even play a fake instrument or lip sync. Alex awakes and Jamie is left with a little shade. Red continues working on the memorial ship when... ...hysterical girls with false hope. Now get it right! I'll be right with you, Jamie. And he promptly sends Jamie back to keep his head down, calling the hitman to set up another hit. Jamie shows back up and it's montage time. Here, put your finger there. He probably already did. What's in Europe? Michelangelo, Monet, Van Gogh. Well, aren't those guys dead? They're paintings. I was kidding. No, you weren't. Chet and his boys show up for a panty raid. Oh, Alex. Oh, Alex, baby. That's assault. Chet and Jamie fight, and here it goes. Oh! What are you doing? Oh. What am I doing? What's wrong with you? I'm gonna get my room. I need some medical attention. What? You need some kind of hotel room that you can just come in and trash? Alex, I'm gonna be sick. Alex, let me I explain. That's the dumbest film lover misunderstanding I have ever seen. Then Miranda comes in to make her move, bullshitting Jamie about the relationship between Alex and Chet. I'm available. Miranda. Jamie? Double misunderstanding! And his ass is tossed. Jamie goes to apologize, but the hitmen show up to kidnap him. Luckily, Bree is pulling up at the same time to see the whole damn thing. Bree tells Alex and Miranda admits that she played everybody because she's a bitch. Meanwhile, Red learns that killing Jamie is a horrible idea. The European promoters, they call, they want all their money back for all the canceled dates. What? Red, babe. Look, I gotta have you here for a minute. Call me tomorrow, The Ruby. studio gave Jamie a $5 million advance for his next picture. The boys say we gotta make it good now. What a fucking idiot. Wow, they caught up fast. Miranda and Sarah follow as well. Why? I don't know. There's car chase antics, followed by this. Hi, boys! Sweet mother of pearl! And crashing into a wall of cardboard boxes. They all end up at the racist bar, probably because they couldn't afford another location. The hitmen are ready to kill everyone, but something happens off screen, I guess. And the old hitter being tased. Red arrives, and Jamie finds a death certificate, which he signs. Uh, I don't think the corpse is supposed to sign the death certificate. Everyone leaves, and I think that the movie couldn't even afford a cop. 
I would call a sorority house party typical, but it's not. It's way below that. It's low budget trash that feels like it was written on the fly. Written poorly, I might add. The acting is terrible, with special consideration going to Attila, who performs some of the worst acting I've ever seen, and that's saying a lot. This film's only purpose was to fill video store space, and maybe a prepubescent boy will pick it up and get some wanking done. This film fucks up a film standard that has been performed hundreds of times before. It's putrid, and it's pointless. You know, when you asked me if I wanted to do an all-nighter, this isn't what I had in mind. <laughs>